We are about ready to go. Nice job by those gentlemen. Already gave you the lineup and the starting defense. Here are the umpires for tonight's ball game. Behind the play, calling the balls and strikes is Joe Belongia. At first will be Tom O'Neill. And your third base umpire is Dexter Kelly. Rocket City in their Saturday best. It'll be white tops, white bottoms, black pinstripes. They have that red and blue RC emblem on the left lapel. A red letter R, a blue letter C wrapped around the R. A small red numeral on the right lapel with black trim, black sleeves. Large red numeral on the back of the jersey with black trim as well. Rocket City with the red cap, black cap, or the red cap, the black bill, and that same R and blue RC emblem in the middle of the cap as Chase Silseth, as you see, goes to the hill tonight for Rocket City. As for Biloxi, Royal two, it's going to be the same jersey as last night, Royal blue tops, gray britches. They have a yellow and white stripe on each sleeve of the jersey, yellow on top, white on the bottom, and then they also have a same yellow and white stripe on the collar of their jersey tops, yellow on top, white on bottom, large yellow numeral on the back of the jersey. It says Biloxi in yellow stitching across the front of the jersey, capital B, lowercase everything else in cursive with a thick yellow line underneath the word Biloxi as the throw goes down to second. Biloxi also wearing the all blue cap tonight, the all navy blue cap with the shucker emblem in the middle. So we are set to go. Silseth on the hill. He'll lead it off against Corey Ray, who's at 227, six homers and 12 RBI. He was last night's offensive hero for the shuckers. Wind is blowing out to right at this hour as Silseth will look in. First pitch of the game is a fastball cut on and miss, and the first pitch is right on time at 635. Silseth coming off of a sensational outing last Sunday against Tennessee. The right-hander rocks and delivers. Let up, swing and a miss. And it goes to no balls and two strikes as he's quickly ahead of the count on Ray. On Sunday, Silseth, five and a third innings. Or pardon me, I'm looking at the wrong game. Sorry about that. Pitches tip foul into the mid of Humphreys. Down on three pitches goes Ray. Quickly strikeout number one for Silseth and one away in the first inning. Anyway, Silseth, six innings, two hits, two runs, both earned a walk and 11 strikeouts against Tennessee on Sunday. Those 11 strikeouts were a career high. You can see the let up on that pitch and the fastball high and tight to Devaney. It's 1-0, and so he picks up right where he left off. Luxy has seen Chase before. He faced them a couple of Sundays ago. Pitch cut on and missed by Devaney, low and away. And it evens now at a ball and a strike. The right-handed hitter stands back in. Next offering. Did he go? Yeah, he did. Looked like a slider down and away. And unable to hold up the bat head was Devaney. It's at one ball and two strikes. But Silsa faced Biloxi on August the 14th. Got off to a great start, then sort of faltered down the stretch as the pitch is spiked in the dirt. Two and two. In fairness to him, it was a sweltering hot afternoon as is the norm in Biloxi, Mississippi in August. But he went six innings, seven hits, four runs, three earned, three walks, four Ks in that ball game was hit with a no decision as the fastball cut on and missed at 97. Down swinging Devaney. Back-to-back Ks by Silseth. Two up, two gone in the first inning for Garrett Whitley. In that game against Biloxi, Chase gave up two runs through the first five innings. One of the runs was unearned. He also allowed a home run to Ray to lead off the first inning. Other than that, he was great through five, and then in the six, he started to struggle. Here's Whitley, and the first pitch to him. Swing and a miss. 0-1, 96 on that one, and Chase darn near did a face plant coming off the mound. Wind continues to blow out toward right. Whitley stands in. The offering is down and away. He took something off on that ball, and it evens at a ball and a strike. We're playing under partly cloudy skies. It's actually quite a beautiful sunset with the clouds off in the distance, the sun reflecting right off it. 1-1, one, one. and that misses high. A fastball goes to two balls and a strike. Game time temperature is 82 degrees. Yes, there is rain in the area, but it's just a little pop-up activity. Hopefully we'll be able to get this one in. Tomorrow, a little shaky. Silseth with the 2-1. Here it is. Down and, uh, down and in with the off-speed pitch, and it goes to three balls and a strike. As suddenly Silseth has, has missed with three in a row. 
Whitley, 5 of 17 for the series. Next pitch, fastball right down Broadway. It goes to 3-2, and two, and now Chase a chance to strike out the side. Crowd begins to clap it up. He goes from the first base side of the rubber. 3-2 on the way. Swing and a miss. Went high on Whitley, got above the hands, and he does strike out the side. An outstanding start to tonight's ball game for Chase Silseth. One, two, three. Go the Shuckers at the end of half a frame. It is Biloxi nothing. Rocket City coming to bat. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. We go to the bottom of the first inning. One, two, three went Biloxi in the top half. There you see Justin Jarvis on the hill tonight for the Shuckers. Here are how, here's how the Trash Pandas line up at 73 and 51 overall. 31 and 23 in the second half. Aaron Whitefield will lead it off and play right field. Batting second, the designated hitter, LeVon Soto, as he runs up to bunt, takes it outside, does Whitfield. And it's 1 0. Zach Neto bats third, plays short. In the cleanup position, Sonny DeShera. He'll play first base. Zach Humphreys behind the dish hits fifth. Jeremiah Jackson in left is in the sixth spot. Batting seventh will be Kevin Maiton. He's the third baseman. Pitch cut on and missed. One and one. Tyron Paris back in the lineup. He hits eighth and plays second. And batting ninth in center field will be Jordan Adams. Next offering. Let up. Foul the way over everyone's head out of the stadium. And it goes to a ball and two strikes. Jarvis, no record, a 3-6-0 ERA on the air. First time Rocket City is getting a look at him. Curve ball hit foul off to the right. And it will stay at a ball and two strikes. We'll get you the Biloxi defense in just a moment. Jarvis out of Mooresville, North Carolina. One, two. Took something off and it misses down and away. Two balls and two strikes. I think I know where Mooresville is. I'm just not positive on that. Other than that, it's in North Carolina. Next offering. Again, took something off, and it's fought off by Whitefield. It stays at two balls and two strikes. By the way, we forgot to mention happy birthday to Aaron. That happened a couple of days ago. In fact, yesterday was his birthday. He tips the next pitch foul, and it will stay at two balls and two strikes. And he rewarded himself with his own birthday present as the pitch is looped down into right field. Going back on it, Warren staggers a bit, makes the catch. Nice little over-the-shoulder catch for out number one. Not easy for him. He's not an outfielder by trade, so a little pop-up like that. It can make things interesting, especially when it's directly behind you. But he picked it up well and was able to make the catch in shallow right field. So one gone. Here's LeVon Soto. By the way, Whitefield last night went two of four with a double. Here's the defense for the Shuckers. Left to right, Dillard, Dostin, and Ray. First pitch is high, 1-0. Around the infield, third to first, it'll be Coca, Devaney, Valerio, and Warren. Behind the play, Clark, and on the hill again, Justin Jarvis. Fastball misses high and outside. Two balls and no strikes. Jarvis back on the hill, 22 years old. Fastball high and away, and it's at three balls and no strikes. Want to feel old? This guy was born in 2000. In fact, I think he's the only 2000 and up. No, they got two guys on there who were born in 2000. Pitch is in there for a strike, and the count at three and one. The other one is Terrence Dostin, who's in center field this evening. The left-handed hitter waits, 3-1. That hit the inside corner, and it goes 2-3-2. Two, and two. Began this season with Wisconsin. Started 24 games there, went 9-8 with an ERA of 4-0-2. He's only appeared in one other game for Biloxi. Went five innings against Chattanooga last week. Allowed six hits, two earned runs, walked three, and struck out five. Pitch hit foul back to the screen, and it stays at 3-2. and two. Received a no decision in that ball game, so he's... Still new to the double-A level. Rocket City will have to learn on the fly with him. Payoff pitch. Fastball just missed inside. Jarvis thought he had him, and I'm not so sure he's not correct. That'll be a walk, and Soto will trot to first. That was a close one. That'll be walk number one by Jarvis, and one on with one out. Here's Zach Neto. 
Zach, 305, two homers and 16 RBI, but he's been quiet in this series, only 5 of 19. He'll stand in there. He's also struck out six times. That's a bit of a concern. A lot of room on the right side as Warren holds him aboard. First pitch. Took something off, and that's low. 1-0. Again, Joe Belangia, the home plate umpire. This is the first time we've seen Belangia call balls and strikes. He came in for Ben Fernandez a couple of days ago, and he's finishing out the series with this crew. 1-0. Fastball in there, and it goes to 1-1. One one. That's a that's an adjustment for the pitchers. So at this point in the season, anyone who's been here all year, you get to know the umpires. You get to know what they like, what they don't like. Because this is Melangia's first game behind the dish, guys are going to have to learn on the fly with him. 1-1. One, one. Fastball low. Two balls and one strike. Wind drifting in. In fact, it blows a little bit from left to right, so a little bit of a crosswind here in the early going. Short lead at first, and now a throw over there. Soto back safely. Yes, Alabama is underway. They're playing Utah State. So any of you who are doing double duty, listening to me and watching them, or listening to them and watching us, we really do appreciate it. And Auburn will be coming up here in just a few minutes as well. 2-1. Swung on, bounced to third, waiting back on it is Coca. They go to second out there. Relay to first, not in time there. Meadow able to leg it out. That'll be 5-4 on the fielder's choice. So Soto retired. Neto now reaches. And one on with two out for Sonny Deshera. Good play to wait back on this by Coca. Neto just a little too fast down the line. So one on with two out. Here's Sonny D. Sonny having a pretty good series, 3 of 10. Had the game-winning hit on Tuesday, 4 RBI for the series as well. So he'll stand in there, righty-on-righty matchup, first offering. Fastball misses low, one ball and no strikes. Jarvis went to Lake Norman High School in North Carolina. Fifth round draft choice in 2018, so he's been around the block a little bit. Grounded weakly to short. To his left to field is Devaney. He'll go the short route to second. 6-4 on the fielder's choice, and Rocket City is done in the first inning. No runs on no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of one, we are scoreless. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. Top of the second inning, we are scoreless, Rocket City and Biloxi do up for the Shuckers. It'll be Dillard, Clark, and Warren, the middle part of the order, after Silseth struck out the side in the top of the first inning. Fans, it was Panera Bread which fed the Rocket City Trash Pandas front office earlier today as part of its Feed the Team program. Panera Bread, food as it should be. Here's Dillard to lead things off, first offering to him. Foul to the screen as tomahawking that ball was. Dillard, and it goes to 0 and 1. Silseth again off to a tremendous start. Dillard, 2 of 16 for the series. He's been quiet, does have a double to his credit, though. And the next pitch misses down and in. Even now at a ball and a strike. Braves are playing the Marlins at this hour. Angels take on the Astros later tonight out in L.A. 1-1. Fastball looked high, and it goes to two balls. And one strike to the left-handed hitter. Diller, 12 homers and 65 RBI. Ole Miss alum. Pitches foul back out of the stadium. And it goes to two balls and two strikes. Ole Miss won today. They beat Troy to start their season. And the count here on Dillard goes to two balls and two strikes. Silseth working quickly. 2-2 on the way. Did he go around on the check swing? They appealed. No, he did not, said Dexter Kelly. And it will run full to three balls and two strikes. One more game left in this series and this homestand. That'll be tomorrow. 235 start for that ball game. Well off the line at third is my ton. Next offering. Hit foul again back to the screen. Staying at three and two. So Dillard putting up a fight. Remember the big fight he put up against Erla last night? You know, it, it didn't result. It resulted in a lot in the short term and the long term in regards to that ball game as Silseth peers back in. 3-2, swing and a miss, good changeup. 
And Diller down on strike. Strikeout number four for Silseth. He's K'd all four minis face. One gone in the second inning for Wes Clark. But if you remember, he had that long at bat against Erla in the second inning. Drew a walk, later came around to score. That was the short term. The long term, Erla had to eat up a lot of pitches. He only went four and two thirds last night. Here's Wes Clark. And the first pitch to him. Fastball, swing and a miss. Climb the ladder. It's 0 and 1. Silseth looking great. Clark 3 of 8 for the series. 0 1. Took something off. That's in the turret. Boy, one thing I've noticed about Chase as the year's gone along, much more animated out on the hill as well. He misses with a pitch right there and he jumps in the air. 1 1. Nice curveball. Falls in there nicely. It goes to 1 and 2. I don't remember him being like that earlier in the year. Maybe I was just missing it. One ball and two strikes. The right-handed hitter waits. The one-two on the way. Swing and a miss. Looked like a slider. Strikeout number five for Silseth. Two up, two gone in the second. Here's Xavier Warren. Right now, Biloxi just trying to put the ball in play. Five men have come to the plate, and all five have struck out. Xavier at 240, one homer, and seven RBI. This is a righty on lefty matchup. Open stance for Xavier. First pitch is high and away. It's 1 0. Oh. Coming up tomorrow, it'll be Brett Carey on the hill for Rocket City. 4 and 6, 4 6 0 oh ERA against Nick Bennett. Carey a righty, Bennett a lefty. Pitch down and in, two balls and no strikes. Bennett, for what it's worth, 6 and 10, an ERA of 5 1 3. And that'll be our getaway day. 2 0. Oh. Hit hard on a looping liner, but now on a hop to his left to field it. Throw to first by Paris is in time. I thought he hit that one harder than he actually did. Jammed on it. He was sawed off and hit a looping liner on a bounce to Paris, who was up to the task. One, two, three. Go the Shuckers in the second. Bottom half upcoming. It's scoreless. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. Bottom of the second inning. Scoreless Rocket City and Biloxi. Fans, Toyota is a proud sponsor of Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball. Their mission is to attract and attain customers with high-value products and services and the most satisfying ownership experience in America. Their vision, to be the most successful and respected car company in America. Zach Humphreys leads it off, and he'll take a strike. It's 0-1. Zach, 250 on the year, seven homers, 27 RBI. This is only his second appearance of the series. Next offering. That's low, and it goes to a ball and a strike. And for Zach, that's pretty much what it's going to be from now until the end of the season as he'll stand back in there. 1-1. Took something off, swing and a miss. Great curveball that time by Jarvis. And it goes to 1-2. and two. With Ohapi in there, you can expect Logan to catch probably four of the six games a week, and Zach will get the other two. Let up. That stayed outside. And it evens now at two balls and two strikes, but he's made the most of it as he'll dig back in there. A home run in this series with two RBI. Pitches chopped over the mound, charging in is Valerio, the second baseman. Turns, fires to first in time, and that'll be out number one in the second inning as Humphreys bounces to second. One away, here's Jeremiah Jackson. 213 with 12 homers and 38 RBI on the season. Jarvis, first pitch. Fastball right in there, and it goes 2-0 and 1. By the way, let's give you the start times for next week in Montgomery. We'll be 6:35 first pitch as the next offering is in the dirt. One ball and one strike. 6.35 Tuesday through Friday. It will be a 6.05 start on Saturday. And then this is where it gets a little weird. 1-1 one, one is outside. 2-1, and one, it must be a promotional thing. But it will be a 3.33 start on Sunday. Not 3.32, not 3.34, or 3.35, 3.33. And you can catch that all on WUMP. Pitch is low. And the count at three balls and a strike on Jackson. 
Jeremiah should see a pitch to hit. Jarvis did walk one man in the first. Next offering, popped up the shoot. He had the green light and hit it on the infield. Underneath it is the shortstop, Devaney. On the dirt, makes the catch. And quickly two gone in the second inning for Rocket City. Kevin Maiton due up next before he stands in. Let's give our station a chance to identify itself. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. First pitch is inside to Kevin. It goes to 1-0. and oh. Jarvis working quickly. He goes from the third base side of the rubber. 1-0 pitch. Hit foul at the plate. And now it evens at a ball and a strike. Again, we wrap things up tomorrow. It'll be 1 o'clock, gates open, 235 first pitch. We'll have our final military-style T-shirt giveaway of the year. First 2,000 fans, 18 and over. Pitch is outside 2-0. Oh. We'll receive a special Trash Pandas military-style T-shirt presented by Akama. Kids will also have the opportunity to run the bases after the game. That's brought to you by the Yard Milkshake Bar. Pitch is fouled off to the left and goes to two and two. Be sure to listen for an in-stadium announcement prompting those interested to line up at a designated location. So the count at two and two. As Jarvis tries to wrap up the second inning. The right-hander looks in. Two-two. Curve hit foul over by the Rocket City dugout. And it will stay at two balls and two strikes. Maiton, three of seven for the series. With a couple of homers. Next offering, another curve. That one was spiked in the dirt about a foot in front of home plate. And it will run full now to three balls and two strikes. Jarvis, fastball, slider, curve, and a splitter. 3-2, here it is. Fastball foul to the screen. And it will remain at three balls and two strikes. His best year as a pro was 2019, where he was what was then low A Wisconsin. Went 4-1 and one with a 3-5-0 ERA over 74 and two-thirds innings. Pitches in the dirt. That'll be ball four to Maiton. It gets away from Clark and trickles over toward the Biloxi on deck circle. But Maiton's going to start, going to stop at first. So walk number two by Jarvis and one man on with two men out for Kyron Paris. In two games as a trash panda, Kyron doing all right. Three of six with a homer, two runs scored, and four RBI. And he'll stand in there. First pitch on the way. Let up. Bounced weakly toward third in his coca. Off balance throw to first in time. And just like that, the side is retired. Rocket City, no runs, no hits, no errors, one left. End of two, we're scoreless. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. We go to the top of the Northrop Grumman third inning of a scoreless ball game. Rocket City. And Biloxi, do up for the Shuckers. It will be the bottom third of their order. Valerio, Coca, and Dostin against Chase Silseth, who has struck out five of the six men he has faced this evening. First pitch by Chase is a strike. 0 and 1. Pete and repeat. He is on fire right now as the right handed hitter stands in. 0 1. Took something off. That floats in there and it evens. El Farmi. It goes to 0, no balls. And two strikes, Valerio, 226, 12 homers, and 50 RBIs. The 0-2 took something off, Grant, broken backgrounder short in his netto, flipped the first in time, and there's one away. Leaning well out in front of that ball was Valerio, and he grounded it weakly and lost a war club in the process. One gone, here's Coca, 225, a homer, and 15 RBI. The time is now. Rocket City Trash Pandas 2022 playoff tickets are on sale now. The Trash Pandas in the 2022 Southern League playoffs. Let's ride. Get your tickets right now at TrashPandasBaseball.com. First pitch by Silseth. A curve. Shocker. A strike. 0-1. I don't have a stat with me, but I'm wondering what number of hitters he's thrown a first pitch strike to. 0-1. Another let-up hit foul at the plate, and it goes 2-0 oh, 
and two. He wants to get back to the show, and he's showing it right here. He's pitching like a major leaguer, getting ahead of the count. The left-handed batter will stand back in. The 0-2, here it is. Fastball tip foul at the plate as Humphreys couldn't quite hang on to it. It will stay at 0-2. By the way, coming up in the bottom of the third, we'll have a representative from Parsons Corporation in here to talk about their company. They're sponsoring the fireworks this evening. Next offering is in the dirt, and it goes to one and two. And if you're wondering, didn't we do that last night? Well, yes, Parsons, they have sponsored both fireworks shows for this weekend, and we're grateful for it. 0-2. Oh, Swung, looped out to left, starting back. Now coming in, Jackson, a couple of steps. He makes the squeeze, quickly two gone in the Northrop Grumman third inning. The mission at Northrop Grumman is to be at the forefront of technology and innovation, delivering superior capability in tandem with maximized cost efficiencies. The security solutions they provide help secure freedoms for our nation as well as those of our allies. So two gone for Dostin. And the first pitch to him is a fastball low, 1-0. and oh. Terrence, this is only his second appearance of the series. One of four, a couple of strikeouts. That came last night. Fastball right in there. And it evens at one and one. Even with the bag off the line at third, Maiton guarding the line at first is DeShera. 1-1 one, one pitch. Here it is. Fastball foul to the screen. And it goes to one and two. Chase has Dostin at his mercy. He'll try to finish him off right here. Next pitch, swung, hit two second to his right as Paris to field, throws the first in time, and one, two, three, go the Shuckers in the top of the Northrop Grumman third. Bottom half upcoming, still scoreless. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. We go to the bottom of the, nor of the third inning. It's a scoreless ball game between Rocket City and Biloxi, due up for the Trash Pandas, it will be the 9, 1, and 2 hitters, Adams, Whitefield, and Soto against Justin Jarvis. And with that, we want to welcome in from Parsons Corporation, as the first pitch is cut on a missed 0 1, Esther Camille. And so for those of you on the radio side, just hang tight. I'll be sure to update you on what's happening on the field. But Esther, so great to have you with us. Thank you. Nice to be here. As the next offering is off the plate, it's one and one. So tell us a little bit more about Parsons Corporation. I think a lot of people have heard the name but might not know everything it's about. Sure. Well, we have a lot that we do. We're in a lot of different markets, a lot of different spaces. Specifically here in Huntsville, um, we are in the defense world. Um, so a lot of our uh, folks are in uh, missile defense. We do a lot of stuff with ground um, ground defense with the Air Force. We have intelligence um, folks. We have recently, in the last two years, won about 300 contracts, totaling over $7 billion. Wow. <laughs> um, so we've got our, our hands in a lot of things out there. Jordan Adams draws the lead off walk, and he will trot to first. One man on with no one out. That'll be walk number three by Jarvis. So what you're saying is business is good. Business is great, <laughs> yes. Um, so by sponsoring uh, this evening, what were you able to do? What were some of the things you guys got to do around the stadium? Well, um, I got to throw out the first pitch tonight. Right. First for me. We're sponsoring the fireworks show tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we had a little video that played just before the game for those of you who are listening on air tonight. That's awesome. Yeah. Count goes to 1-0 and oh as we go back to the top of the order. And Aaron Whitefield. So what's probably the main message you want to get out there this evening about Parsons? Well, with Parsons, our employee value proposition is Imagine Next. And that is the idea that... Um, there are so many opportunities out there, and you can imagine your future with us. Pitch grounded deep in the hole at short throw. The second will not be in time. Good effort by Devaney as he ranged deep in the hole, fired on to second, but great speed by Adams. He's able to slide in safely, and for Whitefield, that'll be a infield single. So runners at first and second with no one out. Here's LeVon Soto. You might be our good luck charm getting on the board this evening. There you go. <laughs> so first and second with no one out. Here is LeVon. Um, you know, we had uh, James Lackey in here yesterday from Parsons, and we were talking a little bit. Obviously, the DOD space is extremely competitive. What are you guys doing to get the word out there about yourselves to attract more employees? Well, we have, um, we're out there on every major job board. We have a social media presence. People can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, 
uh, LinkedIn, um, and we are um, we have actually a booth in the concourse tonight. We have a recruiter in town. If anybody wants to come stop by and see us tonight, we'll talk to you about what positions we have available, what opportunities you can join us for. Pitch is looped down into left center and moving to his right to make the catch is Dawson. That'll be out number one. Runner still at first and second. Here's Zach Neto. Uh, how did the company feel knowing that Parsons was going to be partnering with the Rocket City Trash Pandas? There's so much excitement around this. We love having baseball back in the community. We love being a part of the Trash Pandas world. And um, our people um, have been, you know, really excited about we do a, a raffle for our employees for the tickets. Wow. And um, we had about 200 and 30 people uh, put their name in the hat to be drawn for tickets for this series of games. How do you like that as the set by Jarvis and the pitch is in their own one. So you're from Huntsville or you've been around here for a while? Well, I'm actually from Mississippi. Okay. But I've lived in Huntsville for 13 years. Okay. I've been with Parsons for seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. As the count is at no balls and a strike on Neto, next pitch. Runners will go. Pitch is drilled into deep left, and that one's going to leave the yard. <laughs> Esther, you're staying here the whole game. Home run by Zach Neto, three-run blast. Home run number three, RBI 17, 18, and 19, and it's a three-to-nothing ball game. Zach will circle them up. And Rocket City is on the board first. His second home run, by the way, at Toyota Field. Look at what you did. So uh, other than that, what was probably your favorite, uh, your most favorite part, at least, of the evening? The atmosphere is so fun here. Uh -huh. I love being a part of these games and seeing all the different things going on in the in the stadium. It just makes it so much fun. The um, competitions that they do on the sides of the field just keep fans engaged throughout the night. Now, are you a big baseball fan? I, I'm a casual baseball fan. Okay. Um, baseball was always on television in my home when I was growing up. My dad's a big fan. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a, an extensive collection of baseball cards as a child, too. Gotcha. Okay. Here's Sonny DeShera. Count 2-0 and oh to him. Uh, any events coming up with Parsons Corporation that we should know about? Anything that you want to mention? Sure. So um, James might have mentioned this last night, but the uh, the Radbo is having its first delivery in um, November. And what that is is it's a military-grade um, uh, vehicle that has uh, Parsons lasers in it that help with the uh, dis um, removal of an, an unexploded ordinances. A four-pitch walk to Sonny DeShera. He'll trot to first and one man on with one out for Zach Humphreys. That's now walk number four by Jarvis. Actually, I was talking to James a little bit about this. It, it's so cool, some of the things you guys get to do. Uh, you know, things like that I call baseball games for a living. As time is called, and Nick Childs going to have a word with Jarvis. But what's it like going to work every day knowing that you get to do things like that that, you know, a, a regular schmo like me doesn't really know a whole lot about but can only imagine? Well, you know, it's just the best. We work with the best people, and um, they're here in Huntsville, and that's, that's what makes it so much fun. My job specifically is that I get to help with the development of the people who develop our technologies and systems that defend our homeland. And I just I think it's the coolest job. I love being able to be a part of that, something so much bigger than me. Yeah. Nick Childs continues to talk it over with starting pitcher Justin Jarvis. Uh, how can friends learn more about Parsons? I know you talked about LinkedIn and uh, other social media sites. They can also visit our website at Parsons.com. And if they're interested in joining um, some of the booming business that we have right now, uh, Parsons.com forward slash careers, they can go and see uh, all the openings on our careers page. Or they can stop by in the concourse if they're listening from the stadium tonight and come find me. All right. That's wonderful. Uh, how many folks would you say from Parsons are here this evening? Oh, goodness. Um, I think we had at least 30 tickets that we gave for folks tonight. Yeah. Okay. Now standing in is Zach Humphrey. Zach grounded a second his first time up as a short lead at first by my uh, by Deshera, rather, and the pitch is fouled off to the right, and it's 0-1. Again, we got Ooh. Esther Camille from Parsons Corporation in here. Tell us where else Parsons is located other than North Alabama. Well, we actually have um, – employees in about 25 different countries around the world. Um, we employ about 16,000 folks um, globally, and uh, we're all over the U.S. and Canada, and um, we have a big presence in the Middle East as well. 
Next offering is a curveball that misses low. It's one and two. How often do you guys work with other DODs? I know a lot of them tend to integrate with each other on different projects and things like that. Do you guys do that as well? We do. Um, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure to the extent, so probably not not my uh, realm. But we do do that. Okay. Count is at two balls and two strikes on Zach Humphreys, who grounded a second. His first time up, DeShera will lead away at first as checking over there is Justin Jarvis. Pitch, uh, boy, that looked pretty good, but it's called low by Joe Belongia. It goes to three balls and two strikes. So anything else you want to tell us about Parsons Corporation? Well, um, Parsons is a great place to be. We're uh, One of the things that I love about what we're doing right now is um, our – our culture is really all about people first, and um, even the Radbo technology that we're doing is to really protect the people who protect us. And so um, we really want to get that across, too, that we're, we're for the people. We want, to have, want people to know that they have a home with us if they're interested in this kind of work, if they're passionate in this. You know, come join us. What, what, what uh, as the runner goes to the pitch, grounded into right field for a base hit. DeShera at second. He'll put the brakes on there. And runners will be at first and second with one out. Humphreys with his first base hit of the game. Are there any uh, positions in particular that you guys are looking to fill or add on or things of that nature? Well, we always are looking for, um, you know, is, uh, systems engineers, uh, digital engineering work, um, sys uh, model-based systems engineering positions um, are critical where we where I support with the missile defense world. Um, but we always have a variety of things out there on our page that we're looking to fill. Wonderful. Pitch misses low to Jeremiah Jackson. It's 1-0. Well, Esther, thank you so much for your time, and yeah. enjoy the rest of the game this evening. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you guys. Next pitch, grounded to third, knocking it down, and taking it to the bag will be Coca. He will step on the base for out number two, and moving over to first will be Jackson. Down to second goes Humphreys. And so... Two men on with two men out. Here is Kevin Maiton. Kevin walked his first time up. Three to nothing Rocket City with the lead as a three-run homer by Zach Neto has put the trash pandas on the board. First pitch by Maiton is slap foul pass first. And it goes to no balls and one strike. Justin Jarvis has walked a couple men this evening, this inning rather, and given up three hits as well, including that home run by Neto. Maiton steps out for just a moment. You see the kids wrestling around there on the berm, the Budweiser berm. Check back of second, next pitch. Hit foul off to the left. And it goes to no balls and two strikes as Jarvis will look to wrap up the, in the inning. Maiton is the eighth batter of the frame. And now Jarvis suddenly up to 65 pitches. A right-hander begins to throw in Biloxi's bullpen. Off the line at third is Coca. Oh, way high and away with the fastball. It goes off the mid of Clark. That'll be a wild pitch. Maybe tried to muscle up a little too much on that one, and it sailed on him. So a wild one sends Humphreys to third. Down to second goes Jackson. And runners are at second and third with the count one and two on my time. Now a base hit should mean two runs. Playing close to where short is, is Coca. Next offering, hit foul over by the Rocket City on deck circle. And it will stay at a ball and two strikes. Kevin walked in the second inning. Wind has died down here. From the belt, one, two, here it is. Swing and a miss. High fastball away. Maiton down swinging. That'll be strikeout number one for Jarvis. And the side is retired. But three run score all earned on the home run by Neto. It was one of three hits in the inning. No errors. Two men left. At the end of the Northrop Grumman third, it's 3 nothing Rocket City. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. We go to the top of the R.J. Young fourth inning. It's 3 to nothing Rocket City with the lead. And there you see Mike Guerrero, the Biloxi manager, having a word with Joe Belongia. And I'm wondering, and I don't know if this is the case or not, there have been some pitches that have been 
called balls that look like strikes. Now, for Joe Belongia, it's his first game behind home plate of this series. Don't know if it's his first game behind home plate at the AA level, but things have been a little shaky at times on the balls and strikes. You can't really argue balls and strikes. However, some of the pitches have been awfully close. Now, I don't know if that's what he's discussing right here, but it's the only thing I can think of as Mike will make his way off the field. Former Huntsville Stars manager. He's been the manager for the AA Shuckers for a very long time, about a decade at this point, but he's done a tremendous job, and he's an old friend to North Alabama as the curveball is outside 1-0. And again, I'm just speculating when it comes to that, but it's the only thing I can think of as to what he could be talking to Belangia about. Next pitch is in there, and it evens at a ball and a strike. Ray struck out to lead off the ball game. Next pitch, curve, rip, nice diving stop. Up with it to Shara. He'll take it to the bag in time, one away. Look at the big fella pounce on the ball. Dove toward the line with that glove on his left hand and made a great stop for out number one. Did a little spin rama as he got to his feet as well. So one out, here's Cam Devaney. Cam struck out swinging as well. Already five Ks for Silseth. And the let-up misses down and away, 1-0. and oh. Chase struck out the first five men he faced. The last five have put the ball in play. 1-0 pitch. Fast ball lifted toward right, coming near the line is Whitefield. He'll slow up, crossing into foul territory. He makes the catch. And there's two away. Devaney gave that one a ride, but out. Fans, groups have more fun at Toyota Field. Celebrate your next occasion at Toyota Field and enjoy the awesome benefits of a Trash Pandas group outing. Get the details at trashpandasbaseball.com slash groups. And here's Whitley. Garrett struck out swinging his first time. The pitch to him. Swing and a miss. A fastball. 0-1. Whitley now 5 of 18 for the series. Still having a nice series, but... Nothing like he did last time as the pitch is bounced towards second. Long run to his left by Paris. Throw to first is in time. And another easy peasy 1 2 3 inning for Chase Silseth in the top of the RJ Young fourth. Bottom half upcoming. It's 3 0 Rocket City. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. We go to the bottom of the R.J. Young fourth inning. It is three to nothing, Rocket City, and there you see Biloxi has gone to its bullpen. It'll be Kent Hasler coming on in relief of Justin Jarvis, who goes three innings, allows three hits, three runs, all of them earned. He walked four and struck out one. That was a very lengthy bottom of the third inning, and as we approach the end of the season here in minor league baseball, I think they want to scale back. Jarvis a little bit. He threw, I believe, 65 pitches in the ball game. Looked okay through the first two innings, and then in inning number three, he struggled mightily, walking two and allowing three runs, including the three-run blast by Neto. So here's Paris, the only man who didn't bat last inning. He's at the plate, and he waves at the first pitch. 0-1 for Hasler. This will be his second appearance of the series. He also pitched on Wednesday. The right-hander at the belt, the kick, the delivery. Fastball hit foul off to the right. It's 0-2. Hasler won an inning and two-thirds in that ball game. Allowed two hits, two runs, both were earned. Walked none, struck out four. He pitched the remaining uh, remainder of the fourth and the fifth inning. Allowed a two-run homer to Zach Humphreys in that game. Rocket City actually tied it on that home run by Humphreys. Hasler did not figure in the decision. The 0-2 on the way. In the dirt, boy. He held on to that sucker a little too long. As he spiked it about two feet in front of home plate. One ball and two strikes. Hasler is one of several former independent league ball players on this Shuckers roster. He'll look back in. 1-2. Here it is. Took something off, down and away. Did he go? No, he did not, says first base umpire Tom O'Neill. And it evens at two balls and two strikes. Hasler, one and three, a 4-3-1 ERA, 25th appearance, all in relief. 0 of one in saves, 31 in a third innings, 27 hits, 23 runs, 15 earned. 
Five homers allowed and one hit batsman with 14 walks. Pitch grounded left side, past the diving, my pass a diving Coca into left field. I had my book turned to the wrong side. Almost said my ton. Paris with his first hit of the game and one man on with no one out for Jordan Adams. So 31 and a third, 28 hits now, 23 runs, 15 earned, five homers allowed, one hit batsman. He's walked 14 and struck out 39. Opponents hitting 233 against him. He's had a pretty good year. Hasler out at Chandler, Arizona, suburb of Phoenix. Jordan waits. First pitch, runner goes. It's low. Throw to second is going to be late, and it trickles into center field. Paris didn't see it until it was too late as Dostin came in to back it up. So Paris will steal his second base in as many opportunities. And now a insurance run at second with no one out as that throw sailed on Clark. By the way, look at this. Jackson, Paris, Adams, Whitefield, Soto, Neto. There is some serious speed on this Rocket City starting lineup. That could be a game changer come playoff time. Leading at second is Paris. Next pitch to Jordan. Here it is. That's in there, and the count goes to one and one. By the way, congratulations to Jordan's dad, Deke, who is a assistant football coach at the University of Arkansas. They knocked off Cincinnati today, 31 to 24 in Fayetteville. From the belt, 1-1, one, one. and the pitch misses down and away, off-speed pitch. It goes now to two balls and one strike. Wind has died down here at Toyota Field. Shaded up the middle, the second baseman, Valerio. Hasler signed last year by the Brewers. In fact, it was last May. 2-1, here it is. Fastball hit foul out of the stadium. And it evens now at two balls and two strikes. Like I said, former Indy League ball player, he was in the Frontier League with the Lake Erie Crushers and the Winnipeg Gold Eyes of the American Association. Two very good leagues. I would say it's on par with low to high A ball. 2-2. Hit foul at the plate. In fact, he double hit it. Hit it foul on the front swing, and then on his back swing, he caught it again, did Adams. Count at two balls and two strikes. There's Paris over at second. He'll lead away. Shuckers playing Adams straight away in the outfield. The right-handed hitter stands in. Another solid at-bat by Jordan. 2-2. On the way. In the dirt. Good stop by Clark. 3-2. And, and what do I mean by a good at-bat? It Good at bad doesn't necessarily mean you get on base. If you are going down on three pitches every time or four pitches, well, there might be a problem. But if you're fighting a guy and you're working it to a 2-2, 3-2 count, seven, eight, nine pitches per at bat, you're doing a heck of a job at the plate. And Jordan, you're seeing more and more of that as the season goes along. 3-2, that just missed outside, ball four. Hasler thought he had him on the off-speed pitch. That'll be walk number one by Hasler and already the fifth walk of the game by Biloxi pitching. So two on, no one out. Here is Aaron Whitefield. By the way, I did some thinking. I haven't asked anyone, but I'm going to speculate a little bit right here. I look at the Shuckers, and I see all of these former independent league ball players on their team. It sort of makes sense. A lot of those independent league Independent leagues as the runners go, pitches high, throw will go to second. It's going to be late there, and both men stole their bases easily. He had no shot on Paris, so Clark decided to fire on the back end and try to get Adams. But back to back steals for Paris. He's got three, and then Adams picks up his 15th in as many opportunities. That was actually the right move by Clark, but the throw was high, and Jordan got a good jump as well. So second and third with no one out, the Cal 1 0 to Whitefield. They're going to leave the infield back up the middle. Next offering. Fastball that hits the outside corner. Count at a ball and a strike. But anyway, a lot of those independent leagues are located in the Midwest. So you got a lot of scouts from the Brewers and other 
Midwest teams who can go to these different independent leagues to find talent. Pitches chopped over the mound. That'll score a run in Valerio. Fields, bobbles, throws in time. That'll be out number one. Whitefield drives in his 32nd RBI of the season. In to score Adams and not, or pardon me, in to score Paris. And not only that, but he moves Adams over to third. It's four to nothing. ShopTrashPandas.com has a special offer for the Trash Pandas broadcast network. Use promo code TRICKYRICKY at checkout and receive 10% off your entire order. Use Tricky Ricky at checkout at ShopTrashPandas.com. Here's Soto now infield in, and the first pitch is low. It goes to a ball and no strikes. But anyway, when you have all those independent leagues around you, you can go out there, procure talent, try to add to your farm system, and apparently the Brewers have used that, especially when it comes to their pitchers. 1-0 is lifted into deep right field. Turning tail is Ray. He looks up. That one is out of here. Levon turns on one. Home run number six, RBI 52 and 53, and this is a runaway. It's six nothing. I know he's not known for his pop, but he got that one out of here with relative ease. Just a nice, easy swing, turned on it, and if you're not familiar with Toyota Field, our fence is about 10 feet tall from left center to right center. Once you get into straightaway right field, there's an uptick on the height of the wall. As Zach Neto stands in, hit a three-run homer his last time, pitches low, 1-0. He hit it over that second stanza of wall signage for the home run. So not only did he get the distance, he got a pretty good height on it as well. Neto waits the pitch. And that misses low. Two balls and no strikes. So Rocket City has blown this sucker open. 6-0, 6-5-0 six, for the Trash Pandas as we play the bottom of the R.J. Young fourth inning. Neto digs in. Next offering. Pulled the string on him down and away. It swung on a missed. Count at two balls and one strike. Three runs in each of the last two innings for the Trash Pandas. They play Zach straight away. Next pitch. Swing and a miss. Look like another changeup down and away. So it will go to two balls and two strikes. Neto also grounded into a fielder's choice in the first inning. The right-handed hitter steps back in. From the belt, 2-2, two -two, here it is in the dirt. And it will run full to three balls and two strikes. But as I was talking about independent leagues uh, around the Midwest and independent leagues in general, one thing that is plucked from those teams on a consistent basis are pitchers because pitching is such a priority for any team, whether it's major or minor leagues. 3-2, fastball high and away, ball four. And if you have a team that's a little light on pitching at a certain level, they'll go out and they'll try to find guys from these independent teams to help plug in those holes, as that'll be walk number two by Hasler, both of them coming this inning. Now, you can also make it as a position player. Don't get me wrong. Braxton Martinez, great example. But usually pitchers are going to get the priority over the everyday players at the independent level. So if you're a pitcher and, you get, and you're getting the job done, you've got a pretty good chance of getting signed. Nick Child's going to go out there and talk things over with Hasler, who is struggling here in the fourth inning. If you're suffering from knee or hip arthritis, the resulting pain can keep you from activities you love. Mako Smart Robotics is an innovative solution for many suffering from arthritis. Mako uses 3D CT-based planning software, so your surgeon can know more about your anatomy to create a personalized joint replacement surgical plan, helping to get you back to the things you love quicker, like rooting on your favorite hometown team. All surgery carries risk. See your orthopedic surgeon to discuss your potential benefits and risks. Not all patients will have the same post-operative recovery and activity level. Individual results vary. Learn more at makosmartrobotics.com. 
Lengthy meeting out there as headed back to the dugout will be Childs. Second time we've seen him tonight. So here's Sonny DeShera. Sonny with a fielder's choice ground ball and a walk. Sonny digs in. First pitch. Looked like a slider swung on and missed. 0 and 1. So already some early fireworks in this one. Couple of home runs by the Trash Pandas as they lead it 6 to nothing. And more fireworks to follow this contest by Parsons Corporation. Again, we were happy to have them on board here in the bottom of the third inning. Leading from first is Neto. 0 1. On the way. Fastball right in there. And it goes to no balls and two strikes as Hasler is quickly ahead in the count. No one throwing just yet in the Biloxi pen. They like for Hasler to give them at least a couple of innings here. They still have one more game to go tomorrow. 0-2. Runner goes from first. They step off, flipped over to second, and now caught in a rundown is Neto. Chasing him back is Valerio. He'll go to Warren. Warren, the first baseman, chases him towards second. He did he get the tag? Yeah, he did for the out. Boy, that was close. Great effort there by Neto, but he's going to get caught stealing. He kept deking Warren. Warren wasn't sure whether to hang on or flip the ball or what the deal was. And getting out of the way at the last moment there was Devaney because he didn't want to interfere with Neto, which would have given him the extra base. Take a look at this again. Warren keeps chasing him, doesn't know, do I throw, do I keep going? He finally decided to keep going and got the tag on there. So that'll be a caught stealing as Neto moved a little too soon. That'll go one, four, three. And the count 0-2 oh on Sonny. And the pitch high, one ball and two strikes. Under the corporate tagline, your productivity is our mission. R.J. Young helps modern professionals become more successful in their businesses with solutions to securely manage paper and digital information and empowers businesses with leading technologies. Pitches down and away. It goes to two balls and two strikes. Asler will try to wrap up the inning. From the belt, the 2-2 on the way, swing and a miss. Slider down and away. DeShera strikes out. Strikeout number one for Hasler, the side retired. But three more runs score, all of them earned on two hits. No errors in the inning and no one left on base. At the end of the R.J. Young fourth, it's 6-0 Rocket City. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. Top of the Beds Express, fifth inning. It's 6-0 Rocket City with the lead on Biloxi. There's a look at the replay of Zach Neto's home run from a couple of innings ago. Trash Pandas in control of this one. Let's see if Chase Silseth can keep up the good work. First pitch is fouled away by Thomas Dillard off to the left. It's 0-1. By the way, we've had some flashes of lightning off in the distance. Just a quick check of the radar. There is some activity between here and Decatur, but hopefully it'll miss us as the pitch misses inside. It's one and one. Dillard struck out swinging his first time up. Silseth looks back in, 1-1. One, one. Hit foul back to the screen. One ball and two strikes on Thomas Dillard. Well off the line at third is my time. One, two. Got him. Weak hack that time by Dillard. Threw it low and away. It looked like a changeup, and Dillard couldn't do anything with it. Second time he's K tonight. And one out in the Beds Express, fifth inning. Check out the Rocket City Trash Pandas award-winning gear. Visit the Junkyard Team store at Toyota Field or at Bridge Street Town Center in Huntsville or, of course, around the world at ShopTrashPandas.com. Rocket everywhere. Fastball misses high. One ball and no strikes to Clark. That strikeout, the sixth of the game for Silseth, his first one since the second inning. Pitch is right through there, and it goes 2-1-1. One one. He struck out the first five men he faced. 
since then. Biloxi was able to put the ball in play. 1-1. Took something off. Did he go? Doesn't matter. Call the strike by Joe Belangia. And it goes to a ball and two strikes. So Chase well ahead in the count. Clark taking a moment here. He struck out his first time up as he adjusts his batting gloves. The look back in, Chase with the one-two on the way. Took something off and it misses down and in. Two balls and two strikes. Alabama taking it to Utah State, 31-0 in their little scrimmage. Two-two. That one missed low. Tried to get him with an off-speed pitch and had too much dip on it. So three and two the count and now he's got to get one over. The right-handed hitter stands back in, Clark. Chase rocks back and forth a few times. Now he's set to go. 3-2. Swing and a miss. Pulled the string on him, and Humphreys will put the tag on Clark. Back-to-back -back Ks by Silseth. Quickly two gone in the Beds Express fifth inning for Xavier Warren. Seven Ks now for Chase. To be a bit of a sinker that time. Two gone, and here's Warren. Xavier bounced a second his first time up. Even with the bag off the line at third, Maiton, first offering. Hit foul off to the left, giving Chase is Maiton, but it's out of play. No balls, one strike. He continues to get ahead of the count. 58 pitches for Silseth. By the way, a right-hander throwing for Biloxi. Off-speed pitch, misses low. One ball and one strike. Six runs on five hits for Rocket City, including two home runs. Chase with the 1-1 pitch. That misses low. Two balls and one strike. Chase 4-0 in ring play today. The 2-1. Rocketed to left center on the move, though, to make the catch is Jackson, and that will retire the side. Warren hit that ball on the line, but a great jump by Jeremiah. He makes the squeeze. One, two, three, go the Shuckers in the fifth inning. We're halfway home. It's 6 nothing Trash Pandas. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. Robbie Baker becomes the new pitcher for Biloxi. Kent Hasler goes an inning, allows two hits, three runs, all of them earned. He walked two, and he struck out one. So Baker will make his second appearance of the series and face the five, six, and seven hitters for the Trash Pandas. It'll be Humphreys, Jackson, and Maiton due up here in the bottom of the fifth. Josh Carey with you back at our WUMP studios. Running the boards is Jeff Scarborough on this Saturday evening. By the way, for what it's worth, it's now an official ball game. So if we have a big rainstorm, so be it. Righty on righty, the pitch to Zach is a let up that's in there. Oh and one, Zach one of two, he's grounded second and single. We'll take a quick look here at the Southern League scoreboard in just a moment, but first we want to tell you a little bit more about Baker. Next pitch, here it is. That one laced into center field, but over to his left is Dostin to make the catch. And there's one away in the bottom of the fifth inning. Feel tired and drained in the morning? A better day starts with better sleep. Visit your locally owned and operated Beds Express today and let their sleep experts find the perfect sleep set for you. Beds Express, better sleep, better life. Let's see, four. Baker, this is his second appearance of the series. Pitch here on Thursday. Pitch is pop foul off to the right. It's 0-1. Went a third of an inning, allowed two hits, a run. It was earned. He walked none and struck out none as well. Came on to wrap up that six-run seventh inning for the Shuckers. Pitch is bounced foul over by the Biloxi dugout. And the count had no balls and two strikes. Baker, 1-0, a 5-4-0 ERA. This is his fourth appearance, all in relief with Biloxi. Three and third innings, four hits, two runs, both earned a homer and two hit batsmen with three strikeouts. 
pitch foul back to the screen. It's still 0-2. Opponents are hitting 333 against him. Quick check of the Southern League scoreboard. The one that we are we were going to keep a close eye on was Tennessee at Mississippi. Well, that's been postponed due to wet grounds. They're going to play a doubleheader to wrap up that series tomorrow. 0-2. Swung, popped up off to the right and stays at 0-2. And that's absolutely brutal if you're a member of the Smokies. You play two and then you got the long trip home overnight. Yeah, you got the off day tomorrow, but boy, it's not going to feel like much of one. Mississippi, meanwhile, they make a short trip over to Biloxi to play the Shuckers Tuesday. Pitch fouled to the screen. It remains at no balls and two strikes. Uh, their scores, Chattanooga shutting out Pensacola this hour. 4 nothing in Tennessee. They're in the top of the sixth inning. Meanwhile, Montgomery leading Birmingham 3-2 in the capital city. Bottom of the seventh. 0-2, oh, here it is. Down and away. Missed with a off-speed pitch. And it will go to a ball and two strikes. So Rocket City, if they wrap up this ball game, their magic number to clinching the north for the second half would be down to 10. 1-2. Here it is. Hit foul again at the play. Good at bat by Jeremiah. Kind of like Jordan, right? Making the opponent fight. Is that a ball and two strikes? He's gotten better and better as the year has gone along. Went through that slump, but you were expecting that for the young guy. 1-2 on the way. Pitches outside, two balls and two strikes. What do I mean by that? Well, we got to remember, these guys are still very young. A lot of them are college age. So you come into pro ball and you get to the double-A level, even the single-A level, 2-2. Two -two. Again, bounce foul over by the Biloxi dugout. Keep fighting, Jeremiah. When you do that, you may first come in and do all right, but then pitchers are going to start to figure you out, right? For Jeremiah, a lot of off-speed stuff down and away. He struggled with that. But now he's coming around to it. He's seen enough of it. Just want to bring it all together now. 2-2 Two -two offering. Swing and a miss. He struck out, but again, he made Baker fight a little bit. That'll be strikeout number one for Baker and strikeout number three for Biloxi pitching. So two gone in the Beds Express fifth inning. Here's Kevin Maiton. Kevin, 0 of 1. He has walked and struck out. Guarding the line at first, Warren. Well off the line at third is Coca. First offering. Misses outside. Change up. It's 1 and 0. There's a look at Dumpster Dive, one of our mini concession stands here at Toyota Field. Folks getting their grub. 1 0 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Took something off. Looked like a changeup, and it goes to a ball and a strike. Wind drifting gently out toward right field. From the belt, next offering. Lifted foul. Again, towards the picnic patio down the left field line. And it will go to a ball and two strikes. And just like that, a chance for Baker to toss a 1-2-3 inning here. Kevin ready to go. Baker with the 1-2 on the way. Way outside with the fastball. Two balls and two strikes. Baker, a Atlanta, Georgia native. That makes him a great guy. Two and two. If you don't know, I'm from Atlanta as well. Baker kicks and delivers. Fastball again fouled to the screen. Staying at 2-2 two and two as Maiton's making him fight as well. This guy, in 2021, he pitched for the Grand Junction Rockies of the Pioneer League. And remember, the Pioneer League used to be a short season affiliated league of Major League Baseball. Now it's a, another independent league. As the pitch grounded off the middle, kicked off the mound, but right to the shortstop Devaney. Fires on first in time. 6-3 on the put out. 1-2-3 go the Trash Pandas in the Beds Express fifth inning. At the end of five, it's 6-0 Rocket City. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas baseball on the Trash Pandas broadcast network.
Top of the sixth inning, 6 nothing. Rocket City in control. Before we get to it, let's give our station a chance to identify itself. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. Bottom third of the order, two up for the Shuckers, Valerio, Coca, and Dostin here in the sixth. First pitch by Chase is fouled back off to the right by Valerio. It's 0 and 1. Valerio bounced to short his first time up. Righty on righty matchup as the next pitch by Chase. In the dirt, good backhand stop by Humphreys. And it evens 1 and 1. Rocket City looking to up its record to 74 and 51 for the year. Next offering, that's low. Two balls and a strike. By the way, for all the talk we've made about the second half division title, don't forget about the overall season results. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what these guys are prepping for. No split season at the major league level. Pitches high and away. Three and one. But right now, Rocket City seven up on Tennessee in that number. Tennessee 66 and 58. 3 1 on the way. Lifted into deep right. Coming toward the line is Whitefield, though. Slows up, makes the catch. Coming toward the line for out number one. One gone for your son, Coca. Fans, the heroes of the USA Patriots amputee softball team return to Toyota Field Saturday, September 10th. That's a week from today. Meet the team before the game and stay for live music and fireworks post-game. Tickets for Military Tribute Night are on sale now at TrashPandasBaseball.com. Still Seth now against Coca, and the first pitch is waved at by Yassun. It's 0-1. Let's see, if we were playing a full season divisional title, Rocket City's magic number for that. Next offering. Misses high. And it goes to a ball and a strike. Would be down to seven because they also would have the tiebreaker. 1-1 one, one pitch. Here it is. Grounded to second to his left. Pairs from the right field grass. Fires to first in time. Two away. So two up, two gone for Terrence Dostin. As this one was hit rather sharply, but Paris up to the task. Dostin, he bounced a second his first time, and now Coca taking a moment to jog off the field. There is someone stretching out in the Bluxy pen, but I don't know if they'll be coming in next inning or not. First pitch by Chase. Hit foul to the screen, 0-1. He's about to close in on the 70 pitch mark. Left-handed hitter waits, open stance. The 0-1 on the way. Fastball right in there. 0-2. So he can wrap up the sixth inning right here. He has struck out seven through five and two-thirds. 0-2 on the way. Swing and miss. Slider in the dirt. They put the tag on. Eight Ks for Silseth. Uno, dos, tres. Go the Shuckers in the sixth inning. Bottom half upcoming. It's... 6 nothing Rocket City. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. Bottom of the sixth inning, Rocket City in command as they lead it 6 2 nothing. Robbie Baker will stay out there for his second inning of work after tossing a 1-2-3 fifth inning. He'll face the 8-9-1 hitters, Paris, Adams, and Whitefield against Rocket City. So here is Paris. He is one of two. A single, a stolen base, a run scored. He's also bounced to third. So Baker will look in. And the first pitch on the way to Paris. Here it is. And that's on the inside corner, 0-1. So, folks, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it because <laughs> I'm up here and I have the right to do it. Chase is doing a thing right now. He's perfect through six. But there are a lot of things at stake here. As the pitch is low, it goes to 1-1. One one. First off... It was last year against Biloxi that Jansen Junk came three outs away from a perfect game against the Shuckers, but that was in southern Mississippi with a hurricane bearing, bearing down on us. Came up just short, but Rocket City got the win. Pitch is cut on and missed, and Perez down in the count. One ball and two strikes. And I remember one of the things I was a little concerned about as that game moved on, as well as Jansen was pitching, 
We know how careful major league teams are with their minor league pitchers. How far do you let a guy go? Chase is at 70 pitches. Here's the one, two. On the way. That misses high. Two balls and two strikes. For what it's worth, no one is warming up in the Rocket City pen. So Chase will come back out for the seventh. But now you start to wonder if he gets through that. Will he get a chance in the eighth? It's not every day that you go for perfection. 2-2. Two -two. Offering is low on the changeup. It's 3-2. and two. Jay Bell let Jansen Junk go into the ninth inning. He gave up a hit, then he gave up a home run, then he was lifted from the game. He allowed him to try and take it the distance. I don't know if the same will hold true this evening. Paris waits. Payoff pitch on the way. Lifted foul off to the right. And it stays at three balls and two strikes. But for all of the amazing things that have happened this season, if this does happen, and we're nine outs away from seeing it, if this does happen, it would just be icing on the cake. 3-2. Inside, that'll be ball four. Baker walks Paris. Walk number one by Baker. Walk number seven now for Biloxi pitchers. And here's Jordan Adams. He has walked twice, stolen a base, and scored two runs. And he'll bat here with one man on and no one out. First pitch to Jordan. On the way. Fastball cut on and missed. Kept it high in the zone. No balls and one strike. Again, Rocket City, they've scored six runs, three in each inning in the third and fourth. Paris away at first. He's already stolen two bases in this series. Here's the 0-1 on the way. Let up right through there. No balls and two strikes. So Jordan down in the count. Had a little flash of lightning. Again, the game is official. Aaron Whitefield waits on deck on the TV side. You can see him in the far left corner of your screen. 0-2, here it is. Hit foul again to the screen. Right on that pitch was Jordan, just couldn't put it in play. It will remain at 0-2. Baker from the belt. And another throw to first, and again, back in diving is Paris. Baker in the fifth inning got a line out, a strikeout, and a ground out. He did a little bit of everything, and now he's going to ask for time and fix his jersey shirt as they do that. Let's go ahead and see what's going on in Major League Baseball at this hour. It's kind of funny. The first Saturday of the college football season, baseball does take a little bit of a back seat when that starts to occur, and you have to remind yourself, oh, wait, there, <laughs> there's other stuff happening in the sports world. Jordan digs back in. Baker. From the letters, 0-2. Here it is. Swung on, bounced to third. Waiting back is Coca goes to second out there, and they won't make the throw to first. That was a bit of a roll of the dice by Coca. Paris runs very well. He decided to wait back on that ball so he could set up for a throw, and he just got Paris over at second. 5-4 on the fielder's choice. Adams now on at first with one out. Back to the top of the order and Aaron Whitefield. Aaron one of three tonight, a single, a run scored, an RBI ground out to second and a pop up to first. Pitch is outside one to know. His RBI is the only one that didn't come via the home run. Again, Zach Neto with a three run blast and then a two run bomb by LeVon Soto. 1-0, here it is. Fastball right in there. Even now at a ball and a strike. Again, coming up after this one, we'll have fireworks from Parsons Corporation, our sponsor not just for this evening, but pretty much the entire weekend. The right-handed hitter waits. Here's the 1-1. Hit foul off to the right, and it will go to one ball 
and two strikes. Several finals already in throughout the Major League circuit. It was the Giants beating the Phillies on the Bay, 5-4. to four. Giants, though, having a very disappointing season. Red Sox topped the Rangers at Fenway, 5-3. to three. One, two. Here it is. High with the fastball. Two balls and two strikes. And the Rays top the Yankees 2-1 to one as the pinstripes continue their slide. But Aaron Judge did belt his 52nd home run. Yankees with only three hits in that contest. Next offering called strike three. Do him an off-speed pitch on the outside corner. Whitefield caught looking. That will be strikeout number two now for Baker. And two outs in the six for Levon Soto. Royals, actually they just won this one. Royals just wrapped up a win over the Tigers, 12-2 in Motown. Blue Jays and Pirates tied up at one, top seven from Pittsburgh. Ray, Rockies and Reds, rather, are in a rain delay, just underway from Cincinnati. 6-1, Orioles leading the A's, top six from Baltimore. And the Nationals doubling up the Mets 2-1 at this hour, bottom eight from Flushing. First pitch to Soto is outside. It's 1-0. Cardinals beating the Cubs 8-4 from St. Louis, bottom five. White Sox blinking the Twins 7-0. They've got a no-hitter going. From the south side, Twins with a goose egg in that hit column. 1-0. Broken back, grounder to first. Up with it, Warren. He'll take it to the bag himself in time. Soto grounds out to first. Rocket City put away in the sixth inning. No runs on no hits, no errors. One man left on base. End of six. It's six to nothing. Rocket City, this is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. Top of the seventh inning. You see the line scores. You see what's on the line for the moment. Chase Silseth will face the top of the order. Ray, Devaney, and Whitley. He has not walked a man. He has not hit a man as Chase go into his wind. First pitch of the inning is a strike, 0-1. No one throwing in the Rocket City pin. Ray tonight has struck out swinging and bounced to first. Off the line at third is my ton. Silseth, next offering. Hit foul back to the Rocket City on deck circle. 0-2. He has been ahead of the count pretty much all night long. There's only about two or three hitters he's fallen behind to. And each time he's worked his way back. Ray digs back in. 0-2. Swing and a miss. Slider low in the zone. Strikeout number nine. One out in the seventh. Eight away. Here's Cam Devaney. 0 of 2, a strikeout swinging and a flyout to right. He is making this look very easy right now, but you got a very tough hitter at the plate. Devaney, 7 of 19 for the series, and the first pitch is in there, 0 and 1. He has mixed the pitches nicely. Fastball, slider, and curve. We've seen the, well, actually more so the change, but the curve as well. Fastball cut on and missed at 95, 0 and 2. Devaney will now ask for a moment, step out of the box, and just try to slow Chase down a little bit. He's a notoriously quick worker. Devaney trying to throw him off. The right-handed hitter stands in. The 0-2. Missed high with the fastball. It's one ball and two strikes. Trash Pandas played Devaney straight away. 1-2, here it is. Bounce foul over by the Biloxi dugout. Someone popped out of there and made a nice play on a second bounce. May have been Warren. One and two. They play him straight away and deep in the outfield. Silseth, one, two. Swing and a miss. Down and away, going to a right knee on that swing was Devaney. He's at an even 10. And by the way, he's now one away from tying his career high. Nice pitch. Looked like a slider. So two up, two gone. Here's Garrett Whitley, another dangerous man. 0 of 2, a strikeout swinging, a bounce out to second. First pitch, fouled to that screen. It's 0 and 1. By the way, I forgot to mention Ray on that ground out to first. Oh, are they calling this catcher's interference? Oh, no. No. I turned, I looked, and I saw Humphreys talking to Joe Belongia. 
he saying that on the swing, Whitley caught Humphrey's glove. Of all the ways for this to end, no. For the for goodness sakes, I hope he at least talks to Dexter Kelly. Get the other umpires involved. Make sure you get the right call. Hard to tell from that angle. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. And Andy Shadsley having a word with Joe right now. And he's not even going to ask for help on it. What a way for that to end. Crowd boos, and I don't blame him. And maybe it's the right call. Let's see right here. Yeah, I think he caught the glove. I think he did. And you can see Garrett Whitley immediately turned and asked for help on that. He must have been very certain about the call, Joe Belangia. What a way for that to end. Oh. But you still have the no-no. Here's Thomas Dillard. And now a throw to first and Whitley back safely. So that'll go down as an E2 on Humphreys. Next pitch. Here it is. And that's high and away, 1-0. But what you don't want is for Chase to lose that groove. Just don't let it distract you. Now focus on the next hitter. Like I said, the no-no is still intact. From the belt, the 1-0 pitch. Here it is. Hit foul, and I think that caught a piece of Dillard on his front foot. Even now at a ball and a strike. Boy, you just hit. For that to happen, I mean, if it's a routine error, it's one thing. If it's a walk, that's a thing. If it's a hit, okay. Catcher's interference, my goodness. I could never have imagined that. 1-1. One, one. Hit foul up the first base side over by the Rocket City dugout. Now it's at 1-2, and two and Chase with an opportunity to wrap up the top of the seventh inning. The right-hander will look back in. Leading at first is Whitley. The 1-2. On the way. In the dirt, going to get between the wickets of Humphreys, and down to second will go Whitley. So that'll be a wild pitch. And now a runner at second with two out. There you see the little slug up there in the right-hand corner of your screen. Chase still with that no-hitter. Shaded up the middle is the shortstop, Neto. Righty on lefty, the 2-2. Here it is. Fastball lifted foul down the left side. That will go into the picnic area. And stay at two balls and two strikes. Off the line at third is Maiton. Check of second. Chase kicks and delivers. That's low. Now it's at three and two as Dillard has worked the count. You can see the pitch count in the upper left corner of your screen at home, 86. Whitley leads from second. Chase from the belt. Payoff pitch on the way. And that's down and in. So he got the walk anyway. Crowd thought he may have gone around, but I didn't think he did. Walk number one by Silseth. So now you got two men on with two men out, and Zach Humphrey's going to take a moment, go out there and talk to Silseth. And now time called as Michael Wirtz is going to head out there as well. And I think this is really more of a call just to try and get Chase back on track. You know he really wanted the perfect game. He was looking great. He had a strike on Whitley, and I'm sure some guys still feel that may have been a missed call by the home plate umpire. But be that as it may, the call stands. A walk was issued to Dillard. Now he got first and second, and now it's starting to rain as well. Very lightly. And home plate umpire Joe Belangia going to go out there, and, boy, he's he's <laughs> he's taking his life in his hands right now doing that. But they, they break things up, and back to the dugout will go Wirtz. But it happened. It's now over. you got to move on as Wes Clark will stand in, 0 of 2, with two strikeouts.
Playing behind the runner at first will be DeShera. Away at second, Whitley leading from first is Dillard, the pitch. That's low, 1-0. Clark now 3 of 10 for the series. By the way, Braves leading the Marlins 1-0. They're in the top of the eighth inning. Kick delivery. There's a strike, and it evens at 1-1. One one. Boy, Chase snapping at every ball that's thrown back at him. He's, it's a mix between frustration, anger, and being pumped up as he comes back to the belt. Check of second, the 1-1. One Took something off in there for a strike. Good pitch. One and two, looked like a curveball. So a ball and two strikes, and Chase again a strike away from wrapping up this inning. Clark taking his sweet time as he stands back in. Chase back on the rubber. From the belt, the one, two, here it is in the dirt. Good stop by Humphreys that time, and it's even at two balls and two strikes. They play him straight away in the outfield near the line at third, Maiton. 2-2 two -two on the way. Grounded to third. To his left, Maiton. He'll go the short route in time there. 5-4 on the fielder's choice. So the perfect game is over, but the no-hitter no remains. No runs, no hits, one air, two left. Time to stretch. It's 6-0 Rocket City. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. Bottom of the seventh, it's still 6-0 Rocket City on top. That very light rain has let up a little bit. Fans have not exactly scurried to the concourse level, as you can see right here. It's still 6-0 Trash Pandas, and Arnaldo Hernandez comes in to pitch for the Suckers. He's their fourth hurler of the ball game. Rob, Robbie Baker goes two scoreless innings, no hits, one walk, and two strikeouts. And now Hernandez, he will also make his second appearance of the series and face the three, four, and five hitters for Rocket City, Neto, DeShera, and Humphreys. Neto, one of two, a three-run homer, a fielder's choice, and a walk also been thrown out trying to steal. Righty on righty as Hernandez kicks and delivers. Took something off and it sails inside. It's 1-0. and oh. For Hernandez, it's like I said, second appearance of the series. He pitched Wednesday and tossed a scoreless eighth inning. Struck out three of the four men he faced. He also walked a hitter. Next pitch, cut on and missed. Hard fastball over the inner half. Goes to one and one. Well, between innings, as Chase made his way off the field, he went into the dugout, and you could see him look at Andy Shatchley and shake his head no, as if to say, don't take me out. Here's the one one. Jammed him on a little grounder to short. In is Devaney. Throw to first is in time. And there's one out. However, you could see the look on Andy's face. He walks towards him put out his hand and shook it. And usually when that happens, it means you're done for the evening. Now, could he change his mind? Possibly. But I'm looking in the Rocket City bullpen right now, and I see a right-hander long tossing. He's not throwing off the mound, at least not yet. So we'll see what happens here when we turn the page to the eighth inning. Again, the perfect game is over, but the no-hitter remains. Pitch is hit hard and through into left field for a base hit. Hung him a breaking ball, and Sonny slapped it past Devaney at short. So a single for DeShera, and one on with one out for Zach Humphreys. And for Sonny, that's his first hit of the ball game. And here's Zach Humphreys. And again, judging on our replays, we don't know 100% for sure, but it did look like the catcher's interference call was the right call. So with that said, you know, Zach feels a little down about that. Let's see if he can get back in there and come up with a hit as the first offering is cut on and missed. 0-1, oh but here's the deal. Even after that, there was a walk later in the inning, so it was broken up anyway. Zach tonight, one of three, a single, a line out to center, and a ground out to second. Hernandez, next pitch. Fastball, that looked pretty good. 
but it must have been low. It goes to a ball and a strike. Hernandez, 5-2, and two, a 7-4-0 ERA, 35th appearance, all in relief. One of six in save opportunities. 41 and two-thirds innings, 56 hits, 36 runs, 34 earned. 1-1. One, one. Here it is. Took something off, and that hit the outside corner. It goes to one and two. 36 runs, 34 earned, seven homers allowed. He's also hit a batter and walked 27 while striking out 57. Opponents are hitting a healthy 316 against him. And no, we're not talking about John either. Holding the runner at first is Warren. The one, two, here it is. Fastball grounded deep at short. Devaney from a knee goes to second out there. Relay to first is in time there. 6-4-3 on the double play. Devaney to Valerio to Warren. And just like that, the side is retired. No runs on one hit. No errors. No one left. We now go to the eighth. Will Chase Silseth come back out? We'll find out afterwards. It's 6 nothing Rocket City. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. A little dance off here at Toyota Field. That's one of our employees who gets the major round of applause. And we go to the eighth inning, and indeed, the night is going to be over for Chase Silseth. He pitched a magnificent game. Seven hitless innings, no runs, one walk, ten strikeouts. So it'll be up to the bullpen to try and keep the no-hitter as Luke Murphy will come in and face the six, seven, and eight hitters, Warren Valerio and Coca. So for Murphy, this is also his second appearance of this six-game set. Let's see, for Luke, he last pitched on Wednesday, and he went one inning, allowed a hit, no runs. He walked none and struck out two. That was the eighth inning. He faced four men in that contest as the first pitch is lifted foul off to the left, 0-1. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, Come on, can't you leave Chase out there? I mean, how many times are you going to get to throw a no-hitter? And I get it. I get it. And a few years ago, that would have happened. Even last year, that happened with Jansen Junk. But you got to look at the big picture. As the 0-1 misses down and in, one ball and one strike. They are trying to get him ready for a major league career as you look at the numbers for Luke Murphy on the TV side. 1-1. Pitches bounce foul, pass first. It goes to a ball and two strikes. You don't want him going 100, 110, 115 pitches in a double-A baseball game if you hope to make him a major leaguer one day. So with that said, pitch is fouled to the screen. It stays at one and two. You got to think about the organization as a whole, and I'm sure Andy Shatchley has some parameters that he has to work within. Chase was at, I think, 86 or 87 pitches. That's it. That's that's the end of the night. Now the one, two. Just missed low. Good breaking pitch by Murphy that time. It evens at two balls and two strikes. So, again, as a fan, I would love to not see that, but that's just not the case. As the pitch misses inside again, it's three balls and two strikes. A payoff pitch due to Warren, who has grounded second and lined to left. Next offering in the dirt, ball four, boy. Murphy looked like he held on to that one a little too long. He was ahead on Warren, couldn't finish him off. So that's walk number one by Luke and walk number two by Rocket City pitching. And I know there's some people who say, well, if you're going to be a major league pitcher, don't you need to throw 100-plus pitches a game? Again, I get it, but the game has changed. Very rarely do you see major league pitchers start and go 100-plus these days. Pitch is a strike, 0 and 1. And so with that in mind, you got to think about the rest of this season, next season, and hopefully for Chase, the next five to ten years down the road. Valerio digs in, righty on righty. Pitch by Murphy. Took something off, that hit the inside corner. And it goes to 0 and 2 on Valerio, who's grounded a short and flied out to right. Now, does that take away some of the magic of tonight? Sure it does. But you still have the no-hitter, and we'll see if the bullpen can wrap it up. 0-2 by Luke. On the way. Swung on, bounce to third. In my time, up throw to first will be in time there. That'll be out number one. By the way, 
One other change made. Preston Palmero is now playing first base. So Preston in for DeShera the rest of the way as you take a look at the replay on this ground ball. Preston will stay in and back clean up. And unless Rocket City puts a big inning together in the bottom of the eighth inning, it doesn't appear that he will bat. Murphy will request and get a new baseball. So a runner at second, one out here in the top of the eighth inning, 6 nothing. And as you see in the upper right of your screen, Trash Pandas have a no-hitter through seven and a third. Murphy checks second from the belt, the pitch. Fastball right in there, and it's 0-1. There's a look at Chase. What a performance. And you know what? The next time he's in this position, hopefully it's in Los Angeles, a la Reed Detmers. Shaded up the middle is Neto, the shortstop. 0-1. Hit foul off to the left. It's 0-2. And another thing to, and this would require a question of Andy Shatsley after the ball game, would it be any different if it were a perfect game? Don't know. I would have to ask him. But remember, Jansen Junk went into the ninth inning last year down in Mississippi when he had a perfecto going. The 0-2, here it is. Swing and a miss. 94 on the fastball away. Koka strikes out swinging. That'll be strikeout number one for Murphy. Strikeout number 11 now for Rocket City pitching. Two away for Terrence Dostin as you look at it again. Dostin has bounced to second and struck out swinging. First offering, fastball away. It's 1 and 0. Oh. Murphy, 7 and 2, 281 ERA. Those seven wins, by the way, are tied for second in the league. 35th appearance all in relief, 0 of 2 in save opportunities. 1 0, -oh, here it is. Missed high and away. Two balls and no strikes. 42 and a third innings, 24 hits, 13 runs, all of them earned. He's hit two batters, walked 20, 24 now, struck out 48, opponents only hitting a buck 68 against him. The 2-0 from Luke, here it is. Inside, 3-0. Come on, Murphy. Don't want to lose this guy. Corey Ray waits on deck. Alexi with three base runners tonight, all of them coming over the last two frames. Off the line at third, Maiton. 3-0 pitch on the way. High ball four. Boy, he was well out of the zone with all four of those. So second walk of the inning by Murphy. That'll send Warren to second. Or, pardon me, Warren was already at second. And now Dostin on at first. Now we go back to the top of the order and Corey Ray. So that's walk number three now for Rocket City pitchers. Ray is 0 of 3, two strikeouts, both swinging, and a ground out to first. Luke from the belt, first pitch. Change up, that hit the outside corner. It's 0 and 1. I see a right-hander throwing for Biloxi. There's a look at Coleman Crow. 0 1, swing and a miss. High fastball, 0 and 2. So Luke ahead in the count, and he'll try to wrap up the inning right here. Ray digs back in, shaded up the middle, the shortstop Neto, the 0-2. That missed high. He tried to run up a fastball there, but he missed too high. One ball and two strikes. Wind drifting outward at about five miles an hour. The rain has stopped, for what it's worth, as Luke will peer back in. The 1-2. On the way, high and away. Two balls and two strikes. The pitches he's missed with have been high. Left-handed hitter stands back in. Away at second is Warren, leading from first is Dotson. 2-2. Two -two. Call strike three on the outside corner. Ray doesn't like it. He's rung up, strikeout number two for Murphy. And the no-hitter stays intact. No runs on no hits, no errors, two left. Bottom eight, it's 6-0 Rocket City. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. 
Robbie Hitt will become the fifth pitcher of the game for Biloxi as Arnaldo Hernandez goes a scoreless inning, allows a hit, no walks, and no strikeouts, and he will depart with Rocket City leading it 6 to nothing in the bottom of the eighth inning. For Hitt on the season, assuming I can find his numbers through this mass of statistics, Hitt... 4-3, four 4-6-7 four, ERA, 38th appearance, all in relief, one of two in save opportunities, 44 in the third innings, 43 hits, 28 runs, 23 earned. He's allowed three homers, hit 11 batters, walked 22. First pitch, grounded up the middle into center field for a base hit. Not sure if Jeremiah broke his bat or not, but he gets the eighth inning off to a good start with a single into center field, his first hit of the night. Let's take a look at that one. May have. It looked like he hit it off the fist, but he was able to punch it through. Anyway, hit. He's walked 22, struck out 51. Opponents are hitting 249 against him. So here's my ton, 0 of 2. A walk, a strikeout swinging, and a bounce out to short. Righty on lefty matchup. By the way, for hit, this is also his second appearance of the series. Pitches swung on and missed, and it goes to 0 and one. He pitched here on Thursday, a scoreless eighth inning. However, he also allowed two singles, no walks, two strikeouts. Next offering, that hits the outside corner and it's 0 and 2. I saw a left-hander throwing earlier in the Rocket City bullpen, but now that person has sat down and actually now he is starting to throw again. I Maybe Torres, but I'm not sure. Or Maybe Hernandez. Actually, never mind. It can't be Hernandez. This is a left-hander, Josh. Kick the delivery. Hit foul at the plate. It goes to no balls and two strikes. But whoever comes in, whether it's that pitcher or Murphy, they will face in the ninth inning the two, three, and four hitters, Devaney, Whitley, and Diller. That's a pretty tough trio to try and get the no-hitter. The set by hit, the pitch. Outside as it goes off the mid of Clark, but not far enough away for Jackson to move up. Rocket City, they don't have a no-hitter as a franchise. They were no-hit earlier this season by Tennessee. And I believe the Smokies used four pitchers to do that. Again, the story this evening, Chase Silseth, seven hitless innings, one walk, and 10 strikeouts. One, two, misses inside, two balls and two strikes. He only allowed two base runners, the other coming on a catcher's interference. He left after seven innings. Luke Murphy pitched a hitless eighth despite walking two. Next offering, tap foul over by the Rocket City dugout, and it remains at two balls and two strikes. Hit out of West Suffield, Connecticut. Six, seven, and one for Rocket City. All zeros for Biloxi. Two, two, here it is. That caught the inside corner, strike three. Maiton caught looking, that'll be strikeout number one for hit. And strikeout number five now for Biloxi pitchers. One away, here's Kyron Paris, who's one of two. A single, a stolen base, a run scored. A walk and a bounce out to third. By the way, I need to correct myself. Biloxi has actually had four base runners. The two walks last inning, and then the walk and air in the seventh. First pitch cut on and missed. It's 0-1. Braves trying to hang on against the Marlins. It's 1-0 in the ninth from Atlanta. Playing behind the runner at first, Warren. The next offering, that's low. And will even at one ball and one strike. Rocket City with three in the third, three in the fourth. That's been the scoring. Three-run homer by Zach Neto in that third inning. Then a two-run blast by Lisvon Soto in the fourth. There was also an RBI ground out by Aaron Whitefield. Next offering is a strike. And it goes to one and two. His hit is back ahead of the count. Lead over at first, the 1-2. 
That misses low. He pulled the string, and it evens at two balls and two strikes. Hit had a season-long 10 in the third scoreless inning streak from June 12th through July 6th. He'll look back in. 2-2, swung, lifted into deep left field. Back goes Dillard at the track, at the wall. He leads, it's off the wall. Runners get jumbled up, headed to third is Jackson. He'll stop there. Perez will pull into second. And he almost got the ball out of the ballpark. I thought Dillard had a beat on this ball, but he couldn't reel it in. Towards the intrepid sign in left center. And you can see Dillard check several times. Frankly, I think if he keeps going, maybe he reels it in. He's just not familiar with the territory out there. So a double for Paris. Moving to third is Jackson. And now runners are at second and third with one out as Rocket City looks to add to its lead. Dillard, by the way, is a first baseman by trade. So outfield is, especially in that position, still a little new to him. First pitch is looped out into right field. That's going to drop in for a hit. One run will score. Paris is at third. They're going to wave him. The throw from Whitley will be into second. Late there as sliding in head first is Jordan Adams with a couple of euphoric fist bumps. Oh, boy, I haven't seen Jordan that pumped up since he's been called up. But he hit it to the off field and got it to drop. I think that's something they've been trying to get him to do, which is go to the off field more often. Well, he certainly did that, and he just beat the throw. Look at that. Some emotion from the young fella. So Jackson scores. So does Paris. And I'll tell you what, and I said that was Whitefield. That was actually Ray out there. I think if Ray comes to the plate, he may have had a play because Paris broke late from second. Whitefield now lifts one into shallow center, but coming towards his right into left center is Dostin to make the catch. And there's two away. And remaining at second is Adams. So Whitefield flies out to center. He's now one for five. And for Adams, those are also his 14th and 15th RBI of the season. So two outs, runner at second. By the way, it's now an 8-0 ball game. Here's Levon Soto. One of three, a two-run homer. Fly out to center, ground out to first, and a walk. And he takes a pitch low. It's 1-0. Win not a factor. Adams away at second. Next offering, that's lobbed out into right field. On the move is Ray. He slows up, makes the catch in right center field. Boy, you can see he's still not 100%, but he chases it down, and the side is retired. Two more runs score on two on three hits, rather. No errors, one left. Here we go, ninth inning, Rocket City going for a no-hitter. It's 8 nothing Trash Pandas. This is Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network. We go to the ninth, and indeed, it will be Eric Torres on to try and finish it up. This is, needless to say, a non-save situation as Rocket City is up 8 to nothing. but it's like a save situation for what Eric is trying to accomplish. We head to the ninth inning, Biloxi with no hits, uh, against two Rocket City pitchers as Chase Silseth goes seven hitless. Luke Murphy, meanwhile, a hitless eighth inning. One inning, no runs. He did walk two men, but he struck out two others. And so Torres will be going for the first no-no in Rocket City franchise history as the throw goes down to second. For Torres, he picked up a save earlier this series. That was on Wednesday. He pitched a 1-2-3 ninth inning, striking out one. It was his 18th save of the season, and he's going to have to go through the fire. Devaney, Whitley, and Dillard here in the ninth inning. Here we go as Torres will come to the belt. First pitch to Devaney. Took something off. That misses outside. It's 1-0. and oh, Crowd wanted that call. Devaney tonight is 0-3. Two strikeouts and a fly out to right. 12 strikeouts of Biloxi hitters. Pitches high and away. Two balls and no strikes. Ten of them came from Silseth. And again, two more from Murphy. Torres will peer back in. Need to fire a strike now. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Drew a past him at 89. 
And it goes to two and one. Near the line at third is Maiton. Off the line at first, Palmero. Next offering inside, and it goes to three balls and a strike. Don't want to walk him now. Torres, back to the bump, the pitch. Way outside, ball four. So not the way you want to start the ninth inning as Devaney will trot to first. Suddenly, four walks in the game by Rocket City Hurlers. Walk number one by Torres. Assuming the game ends here, final line on Robbie hit. One inning, three hits, two runs, both earned, no walks, and a strikeout. So here's Garrett Whitley, who, well, I won't say he broke up the perfect game, but he was the one who got on base. A catcher's interference is what allowed him to reach base in the seventh. It's also grounded second and struck out swinging. Pitched by Torres. There's a strike, and it's 0-1. Whitley now 5 of 20 for the series, playing off the line at first, Palmero. Next pitch way outside. One ball and one strike. Torres, those 18 saves are a league lead. From the belt, the kick, the delivery. Foul to the screen. Right on that pitch was Whitley, but all he could do was foul it back. It goes to a ball and two strikes. Torres, 2-2, two and two, 176 ERA, 38th appearance, all in relief, 18 of 19 in save opportunities. 46 innings, 25 hits, 13 runs, 9 of them earned, 3 homers allowed, 7 hit batsmen, and now 20 walks with 70 strikeouts, opponents hitting a buck 56 against him. The look back in, the one-two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Took something off at 81, and Whitley swung through it. Second time he's K tonight. Strikeout number one for Torres. Strikeout number 13 for Trash Panda's pitchers. And had a little rise on that pitch as well out of his left hand. So one gone, and now Thomas Dillard, 0 of 2, two strikeouts and a walk, both swinging. Dillard will take the first offering down and in. It's 1 and 0. Torres, formerly of Kansas State, where he was a middle reliever. 1 0 fouled off to the right. He was late on that fastball, and it goes to 1 and 1. Torres on Wednesday, like I said, he faced four hitters. There's a look at Chase Silseth and the job he did tonight. But he was up to 86 pitches, so they pulled him after seven. 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Late again on the fastball is Dillard. It's 1-2. and two. I say go right back to that. But anyway, Torres, when he pitched that 1-2-3 ninth, he faced Ray, Devaney, and Whitley. So Whitley 0-2 of two against him. 1-2 pitch. Runner goes for second, and the offering is outside. It'll go to two and two. They'll give second to Devaney, so that takes away the double play. That'll be a catcher's indifference. And the count at two and two. As Biloxi looking for a hit, they're also looking to break up the shutout. Two, two. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Looked like a slider down and in, and Dillard swung over the top of it. Back-to-back -back Ks by Torres. Runner at second, two away, and now they're one out away as Wes Clark will stride to the plate. Boy, you could see that sucker dive on in to Dillard, who was tied up in knots. Third time he struck out. So here's Clark. 0 of 3, two Ks, like I said. Torres will check second. Off the line at first, Palmero. First pitch on the way. High with a fastball. 1 0. As you see the numbers again from Torres. Wind drifting out toward right. Near the line at third, Maiton. Off the line at first, Palmero. They're straight away in the outfield. 1 0. Fastball low, and now it's at two balls and no strike. Xavier Warren waits on deck. You do have a base open, and considering what's on the line, you don't really have to give in to Clark here. Warren also digging from the batters, from the on-deck circle, pitches outside, and it goes to 3-0. So Torres well behind in the count.
the right-handed hitter stands back in. 3-0, here it is. That missed outside, ball four, so he walked him on four straight. Not the end of the world. That'll be walk number two by Torres. And suddenly, five walks now for Rocket City pitchers. But here comes Xavier Warren now. Warren 0 for 2, a ground out to second, a line out to left, and a walk himself. Rocket City going for its first no-hitter in franchise history. Lefty on righty, the first pitch to Warren. That hit the outside corner, it's 0 and 1. Warren now 2 of 16 for the series. Same setup as before defensively. Eric kicks and delivers. That's down and in, and it evens at a ball and a strike. Missed with a slider. So the count now even at one and one. Devaney away at second. Clark with a liberal lead at first. A high leg kick the pitch. Fastball swung and missed at one and two. So now they're a strike away. And the crowd will start to clap it up. A no-hitter on the line. Torres will look back in. Warren waggles the bat over his head. The one-two on the way. Swing and a miss. He got it. Fastball high and away. Warren chasing. Look at the fellas go out there. A little mob scene out in front of the pitcher's mound. One of our ball boys grabs the baseball and gives it to our general manager, Garrett Fairman. A special night in what has been a special season for Rocket City. The first no-hitter in franchise history as Warren struck out swinging. That will finish at 15 strikeouts in the game for Rocket City hurlers as in the ninth, Biloxi with no runs on no hits, no errors. Two men left on base. And for Eric Torres, it's not a save, but it may as well be one as he kept the no-hitter intact. He goes one inning, no hits, no runs. He did walk two, and he it's struck history. out three as Rocket City. No hits Biloxi tonight. Your final score is eight to nothing. Chase Silseth, that was the man who did most of the work. Seven innings, one walk, and ten strikeouts. Luke Murphy, a scoreless eighth with two walks and two Ks. Eric Torres with the final inning, two walks and three strikeouts himself. And a nice round of applause as the fellas make their way off the field. By the way, the magic number is now down to 10 for Rocket City clinching the second half division title. Let's go ahead and total it up right here. For Biloxi, no runs, no hits, no errors. They, believe it or not, they left six men on base, two over the last, two in each inning over the last three. As for Rocket City, eight runs on nine hits, one error. They also left six. Chase Silseth with the win. He moves to 5-0. and oh. Justin Jarvis takes the loss to fall to 0-1 and one in a ball game that lasted two hours and 24 minutes. Rocket City again, no hits Biloxi this evening by the final of 8 to nothing, And they clinch this six-game series as they have taken four of the first five contests. That'll do it for us here. For uh, everyone on this TV, we will bid you good night. Be back here at 2.30 for the airtime, 2.35 for the first pitch as Rocket City will wrap up this six-game set against the Shuckers. For those of you who are listening on WUMP, stick around. The Northrop Grumman postgame show is coming up right after this. Again, Rocket City, no hits Biloxi tonight, 8 to nothing. For everyone with the Trash Pandas, this is Josh Carey. And you have been listening and watching Rocket City Trash Pandas Baseball on the Trash Pandas Broadcast Network.